Hello, friends. Welcome back. We're in the section on see and understand your data through visualization. And in this video, we'll focus on visualize summary statistics with pandas. And the three topics I want to focus on first, histogram and scatter plots. Second, we'll move on to box plots. And third, we'll take a look at skewness and kurtosis. So let's get started. I'll do my imports of pandas. And I want to bring in the warehouse data set. Recall that there were three variables, products, process, and months. Products was the number of products in a warehouse handled by a worker. The second one is process, the number of seconds it takes to process a typical product. Months is the number of training months that a worker has had. And then rate was the outcome variable coded as one successful, able to make rate, or zero, unsuccessful, not able to make rate. So let's take a look at the summary statistics here. So for products, we see that the minimum is 100, the maximum is 2,450. We could see the standard deviation and 25th percentile, 50th percentile, which is the mean. And then if ever you needed the mean for all the columns, you could always use the mean function and same for the median function. Recall that range is calculated by subtracting the minimum value away from the maximum value. Variance, just use the var function. And then if you take the square root of that, you're going to get the standard deviation. Or you could just use the dot std function as well to get it. For the 75th percentile, there is a function called quantile. And if you put in your what percentile you're interested in, you can get that result. So here we have it. And then now for the 25th, it's 590. From that, we can calculate the interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1, which gives us 1,076. A way to display the distribution of your data is through a histogram plot. And let me just tell you that in pandas, you specify that with kind equals hist. You need to know how many bins you're going to allocate. Each of those bins is like a grouping of your data. Looking at this graph here, the frequency count is on the y-axis, and then the number of group data is your bins. This can all be changed. So if you wanted 15 bins, you can take a look at the distribution. If you wanted 17, so you can play with it to see kind of what works well for your data. Let's take a look at the histogram plot for the other variable process. Okay, so this takes on a different look here. Okay, and then Next, we have simply the scatter plot. So I'm just going to do a scatter plot between products and process. And notice that the nature of the scatter here, it kind of goes from up high and kind of goes down low. If you were to draw a line, you kind of would say that there's a negative correlation between these two variables. Well, let's take a look at that correlation. It's a negative 0.68. So that's kind of like a medium, substantial negative correlation there, a negative relationship. And if you think about it, remember we were talking about collinearity in an earlier video. And if you think about it, the number of seconds in which you would process a product, that will affect the number of products you can handle. So if you're quick, if it only takes you seven seconds to process a product, then the number of products you could process would be large. So it's a negative correlation with lower number of seconds and higher number of products. So that kind of intuitively makes sense. Let's take a look at the scatter plot here using a color map. This time I've specified both products and process. It looks like 
process is on the y-axis, and notice that this color map towards yellow, it's 1.0, and towards this dark color, like a purple here, it's 0, 0.0. So our outcome variable is binary, and that's why you see these two colors here, the yellow and the dark purple. So that's how you take a look at a color map. I'm going to just show you this area plot, and it's probably not very meaningful to use an area plot like this, but it is available if you find it a more visually meaningful way to convey information, you could always use an area plot. The kernel density plot is a way to also showcase your distribution of your data, but unlike the histograms, which rely on the bins and then the appearance of your distribution changes accordingly, you do not have to set bins. So this kind of smooths out the edges, if you will, and shows the density of your data. So this is, in, one, in some sense, a better way to demonstrate your distribution. So let's take a look at the kernel density plot for the other variable. Now I want to turn to box plots. And box plots are a very good way to demonstrate what is in your summary statistics. This time I have two box plots and I've split them by the group according to rate. So this is the zero group and this is the one group. And I'm looking at the column of products. They've been split according to the data here. And the way you read this is this notch here is the minimum value. And this one here is the maximum value. And then you have the 25th percentile here. And then your 75th percentile here is at the top of the box. This horizontal line here within the box is your median value. And then the length of your box is the interquartile range. Now up here where you see these small circles, those are the outliers you know, data that is just, you know, extreme values. So similarly, you can compare according to groups here, the zero groups and then the one group where they're making rate, how they compare. And here's the box plot of the other variable process. Again, it's split according to zero and one groups. And then I set the grid equals false so you can see the box plots without the grid lines. Now I want to turn to skewness, and that's a measure of distribution, how it differs from a normal distribution. So if in a bell shaped curve for a normal curve, both the left half is like a mirror image of the right. And so you have symmetry around the center. When your data is shifted more to the left or more to the right, you have skewness. And there's a function called dot skew that you can use to find how much, what your skew value is. Here it is 0 0.335. Another way is to check your mode, median, and mean value. And if the mode is less than the median, which is less than the mean, if all that holds true, that the mode is less than the median, the median is less than the mean, then you have a situation where you have positively skewed. So the most frequent values are low and the tail is towards the high values. Now, another related issue to your distribution shape is kurtosis. So this is focusing on the tail relative to the center of the distribution. So typically in a normal bell-shaped curve, you have the standard deviations of one, two, and three. The standard normal distribution has kurtosis of three, and that means mesocurtic distribution. The point of comparison is whether you are greater than three or less than three. If you're greater than three, then you have a thin distribution. You have positive kurtosis. If it's less than three, 
you have a flat distribution. You have negative kurtosis. So you can calculate this by calling the dot kurt function for kurtosis. Here we have negative 1.156. And then if you want to take a look at the kernel density plot to see the distribution, you can. The tail kind of has a flat distribution. So we can conclude here that the product's variable has a flat distribution, hence negative kurtosis. So that's all I have for you in this video for now.